Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Riti Dutta and I'm a software engineer at Amazon. And in today's video, we are going to start off a very new and special series that is the design pattern in LLD series. So the first stuff in the series is the builder pattern, which is a very, very commonly used design pattern. And I've seen a lot of it in action in production, in actual real world in all the companies that I've worked for, right? So in today's video, we are going to mainly uh, build up uh, our use case for builder pattern we are going to actually see that why do we need builder pattern like a lot of people will talk about okay this is the builder class and this is how you build your objects and stuff but my point of concern over here is I want to un make you understand you guys that why do we need real uh, builder pattern right and I'm slowly going to build up on different examples so that you are able to grasp that why do we need builder pattern in the first place right and uh, you would be able to appreciate that how does it helps us in solving a couple of uh, design problems right so without any further ado let's get started with this video but before doing that don't forget to follow me on instagram i will find the link in the description down below don't forget to join me on the telegram group right again the link is in the description down below and don't forget to check out my graph playlist series uh, you will find uh, all the topics from graphs all the important questions that are asked in top product based companies and if you go to that playlist you would be able to solve 99.9 percent of the problems that are asked in interviews at least when it comes to graphs right so now let's get started with builder patterns So we'll go step by step. So make sure that you stick with me to the end of this video, right? And then only would be able to appreciate and grasp the builder pattern concept, right? So now, so see, I mean, first of all, you have to understand, like let's let's consider a very real world use case, right? Suppose you're building a e-commerce platform for pets, right? Where you're basically, let's say, consider that you're selling dogs, right? Or, and suppose obviously other animals as well. So now let's create a class dog, right? And let's say we have a couple of, uh, attributes in the dog right so basically it's an entity dog is an entity right and let's say it will have a gender right again gender can be an enum but i'm that that is that is something i'm not getting into i want to keep things as simple as possible and concentrate on the main use case that is this builder pattern right and why do we need it so forget about everything forget about design pattern just just remember the concepts of basic oops and java right so we'll be creating a gender string let's say we need a, a name of the dog right that is optional for now let's keep it optional that uh, like some people some people might provide the name of the dog and some dog might not have a name right but this is this is like important gender is important right uh, also let's say string breed right so what is the breed of the dog like a golden retriever like a pug like a cocker spaniel so on right uh, let's say that what is the price of this dog right this can also be a, a, a entity right also let's say what is the age of the dog right so let's say there are different entities that can be there but let's now focus on two important attributes that is let me take a different pen color so that i can be able to highlight i am able to highlight so that i'm able to highlight so let's say this is gender and this is breed right can you can you spot the speciality of these two attributes other than the rest the th the speciality about this is a dog's gender right once it is born as a male, it cannot be, it cannot die as a female or it suddenly cannot change into a female, right? So once a dog's, dog class has been initialized, so we will talk about in the terms of objects and classes over here. So once this dog object is initialized to some site, to, uh, to, to an entity, right? So let's say uh, we can create multiple objects of this class, right? So we can create one dog whose name is probably uh, uh, Bruno, right? And we can make, uh, create another dog whose name is Elise, right? And let's say, like Bruno's gender is initialized to male, right? So throughout the course of his existence, can Bruno be converted to female? No, right? Similar for the breed. So if Bruno is born as a pug, he will die as a pug, right? He can't be, uh, he can't change or transition into some different breed like a golden retriever or a cocker spaniel, right? So it's very important that once we initialize this dog, right, with some, you know, whatever, with a setter, getter or constructors, whatever it is. So I want to emphasize on this fact, that once you have set the gender of a particular dog, right, you cannot change it. Similarly, once you have set the breed of a particular dog, you cannot change it, right, throughout the uh, life cycle of the particular object or the do particular dog object, right? How can you do that? So obviously, the first thing that comes to your mind is to use the final keyword. Now, these are very Java primitive concepts, so I'm not going deep into that, right? You can always read uh, up for it or maybe I can make some separate videos. But I assume that you know the basics of Java, like the final keyword, what are constructors, what are getters, setters and all these things, right? Now, coming back. So you can use the final keyword and maybe you can make something like final string gender, final string breed. You can do that. But, but we all know that we don't, we basically encapsulate the attributes in an entity, right? So we don't directly 
make this public all these attributes public and let it let our clients access it right we don't do that right so we always make this private right and all these fields actually and we expose something called getters and setters right so there would be so these will be private that means it cannot be accessed outside of the class right and and uh, we expose fields like let's say public void we expose the setters public void set gender and let's say we pass uh, the string gender right let's say this is g and we do something like this this dot gender is equals to g right so this is how this is how we would set gender right let's consider a gender attribute for now and if you, just in case you want to get gender we will have a getter method right get gender and return the gender of the particular <coughs> drop attribute right drop object sorry now the question is so now let me take a step back let me take a step back and understand what is what is a client right who who actually are clients right so normally i've seen this uh, like misconception that people think that the end users are, are the clients like let's say if you're creating the amazon e-commerce app the clients are the end users who are actually using the amazon shopping app but this is a like this is a myth right this is not a myth even this this i would rather call a misconception right <laughs> so who is a client let's understand this client is someone a client is someone whom we write code for that can be end users that can be programmers as well i will let me give you an example let's say i work at amazon and i work at a team a right now i develop some features let's say i have written some functions right and let's say then there is team b right who works on some different features but the use use of all the functions of my team's feature or maybe some functions that are used in team b the team a right and they call that functions right and then this team b serves to the end users like the clients like you right so over here if i'm working at team a and i'm make, writing some functions right which would be used by team b right and maybe team b would with the help of those functions they will write have some own logic they will have their, some own functions and together they will like serve uh, the final product to the end users right so my so my client as like as a developer who is working in team a will be not be the end user but be the team b right because team b would be using my 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 functions or our team's functions to develop their own code right so team b will be the client of team a right and the end user basically would be the client of team b right so i want you to understand first because i would be using this word client or term client throughout this lecture and maybe in the next couple of lectures as well as we go into design and uh, lds right and design pattern specifically that you have to understand a client is someone right whom you write code for so let's say let's say that someone who would be creating the class of this job object right they so they are some clients right so they are the clients of this class right so let's say from where you will instantiate this dog object so let's say i will have a driver class right uh, let's say i will have a driver class and inside inside of that i will have a psvm like a public static void main and there i will be initializing the dog dog equals to new dog something like this we will do right so this driver class you can refer to this as a client right someone who will be using this dog class to instantiate dog objects can you, you can treat that as clients right and you can also assume that the let's say for developer a like let's say riddhi is developing this dog is, is is developing this dog class right and let's say there is this for example this driver class is being developed by someone else let's let's call it a uh, driver right so he's he's like he's uh, uh, probably developing this class driver uh, uh, and and let's say he's probably developing this class driver and which basically means that we might be working simultaneously and we might not have any connection between us right so so let's say that so understand this that driver might not know what is going inside this dog class it would just be using this as a black box right and i might not know that what is going inside this driver class and how is going to use my object dog right so you can understand that driver is my client for you can like assume it for now and we will see why these things matter why this piece of information matter we will see as we go along right now let's come back let's come back so now our problem was that we cannot set we cannot allow the gender attribute we, let's consider uh, consider on gender right that is very easy to understand and relate to right so let's say that a gender of a dog once it is initialized like let's say if i have done something like this dog dog equals to new dog right then i cannot and let's say i also do dog dot 
let's say dog dot set uh, gender to male right i again cannot set as gender to female this function should not be allowed this is not allowed so ideally my gender attribute can only be set once how can we ensure that right so the first thing that comes to your mind is somehow we have to ensure that this setter function is being called set gender function is being called only once right so what for that what we can do is we can either we either choose not to expose this uh, this setter function at all so basically that means that we are not exposing this set gender function to our client let's let's consider striver in this case so let's say striver won't be able to call uh, the, the call the setter function right but now striver will tell me hey i need to set the gender right at least once ek bar to karna hi hai right so how will i set it right because you are not exposing this gender function to me set gender function to me uh, because you are worried that i might misuse your uh, misuse the gender attribute and i might end up setting uh, or changing the attribute more than once right but it ideally should not happen because as i said a dog gender cannot change from male to female right <clears throat> so and also i am not giving him the access because again this is encapsulation we cannot make it public right we cannot make any of the field public right so now the client striver says that hey i mean how do i set the gender attribute you are not giving the you are not giving me the access to your attribute you are not giving access to your setters right so what is the way out here and then i say okay take a constructor so let's you know like we can also initialize attributes to constructors as well so i will say okay i will like expose a constructor where you can pass all of these fields right so you will pass string gender you will pass the string name right and the other attributes and maybe you can just set this dot gender is equals to whatever gender you has been passed and so on right so this now striver will say okay i got a point so i will now initialize so this is this, this is the client code dog dog equals to new dog right and let's say i will call it a male right name something like bruno and stuff like that right now where does the problem arise this is fine this is fine like striver was happy and he started creating lot of dog instances right but now let's say a customer comes up to me and says hey i want to add more information about the dog right the product team comes up to me and the product team is like they keep on uh, changing the requirements right you all saw in the in my video with shravan tiko right now let's say shravan uh, comes up to me and says hey let's add the attribute boolean is this dog vaccinated or not right there are a lot of, like there are reviews and all those vaccinations that a dog has to go through anyway let's say he asks me to create this field right then try to understand this thing that we have to add another parameter to this constructor to this constructor right and then striver would be really angry with me because all this code will now start failing right because understand the flow over here understand the series of events shravan comes up to me and says hey add an add an is vaccinated field right so what i do is i add this field and let's say that i uh and again this field let's say cannot be changed it can change only once that is why i cannot uh, expose a, a setter function over here right to to striver uh, who is my client right as a result of which what i do is i uh, like inside the I, i make changes to this constructor right and i add another field that is boolean is vaccinated right but as a result of this what happens is striver code start failing because he while creating the dog he was only sending me four parameters so now his code starts failing and he would be really really angry with me and this this raises the com- uh, problem of backward compatibility issues right our code should be backward compatible let me give a very real world example over here so java i think till 1.5 version used to implement link list right while they used to create hash maps like in, in the internals of a hash map used to use a link list in their bucketing uh, strategies right now they have replaced that with a balanced bsts right but do you think once when they did this change right with the other uh, the clients or the person like we who use hash map to solve data structure coding problems do you think that code fails i mean internals of hash map might have changed but does that change the way we call hash maps or the getter whatever like put get functions does do that change or do that fail no because that code is backward compatible in other words you can say that whatever changes i make internally my client should not have any side effects or my client should not have to bear the pain of making the change on their side 
that is the thing I want to point out. So if I make a change over here, right, in this constructor class, Striver also has to go through its code and also make the changes to his class as well, which is not good. And that raises the concept of backward compatibility, the problem of backward compatibility, right? Also, also, let's say that now Striver comes up to me and says, let's say there's another client. Okay, this is Striver. Now let's say there's another client, let's say Raj, right? And he comes up to me and he says that he's a different client, let's say. And let's say he says, hey man, I, my, uh, I, I want to instantiate dog, but I would just care about the gender and the name. I don't care about his vaccinated. I don't care about the price and stuff like that, right? Let's say he's, he's probably creating something like a vaccination portal. And let's say he just needs the name of, he just needs to show the gender of the dog and the name of the dog. And let's say, is it vaccinated or not? He doesn't care about the price, let's say, okay? Just a use case I'm giving. So now he will say, hey man, I want to instantiate the dog class with only gender attribute, name attribute, and the uh, and his vaccinated attribute. That's it. I don't need any other attributes. And because I might not have those information available to me, I might not know the price of the dog. And I don't care about it as well. So what will you do? We'll again create another constructor, public dog, and then you will pass only those parameters that are needed, right? Okay. And then you like the Raj would be able to call this constructor and Striver would be able to call this constructor. You know what is constructor overloading, right? Method overloading, constructor, constructor overloading, basic concepts. Now, again, let's say another client comes in and client as in developers I'm talking about, okay? So let's say there's another client, let's say uh, uh, Rahul, right? Rahul comes in, right? And he now says, hey, uh, I need just to instantiate a dog with its name and gender, that's it. Or let's say name and age, that's it, right? Again, I have to create another constructor, right? So can you understand the problem over here with this constructor overloading that different clients can come in, right? And they might have the different choice or combinations of parameters that they want to instantiate the class with or the dog or class with. And in the worst case, it can be exponential and I, I might end up if there are n attributes of the dog class and I might end up creating two to the power n constructors, which is really, really bad which is really, really bad code, right? So then again, there is this problem of dirty code that arises, right? There's another problem, right? And another problem is that also the, the clients, our clients has to remember the order of the parameters, which is also very bad. Like Raj has to remember, okay, gender is being passed over here. So I have to first pass gender, right? Ne next name is passed, so I have to pass name. So the, we are also enforcing the clients. So this is called what we call client enforcement. We are enforcing the clients to like know the, to remember the order of the parameters, right? So now we understand, yes, we are definitely able to solve the problem uh, of uh, like instantiating the particular attribute of that particular object only once and not allowing uh, the client to change it afterwards once, once they have instantiated the attribute for the first time. But however, uh, while doing so, we are getting the problem of backward compatibility, dirty code and enforcing like enforcing the client to remember the order, right? So now what we can do? Now what we can do as, as, as a developer of this dog class, what changes I can bring so that I'm able to uh, provide a better experience to the clients, right? So now let me write this dog class again, right? And let's say that I have a constructor, right? And let's say, I pass an object, I pass an object. Let's call it X for now. You can see how we can better rename it, right? But let's call it X for now. And let's say, so this is the dog and this is all the attributes which I'm not writing again, right? And now I will just have only one constructor, right? And I will just ask the client to pass an object of X class. You will see what X class is, right? But we'll actually name the X class later, but let's call it X. But what does this X class contain? This X class will contain the same attributes, same attributes as the dog class contains, like the gender, name, breeds, price, and age, right? So now, what the, so it will contain string name, all the same attributes as the dog class, string name, string uh, uh, gender, and stuff like that. I'm not writing it again, right? You can understand. Now, what I will now ask the client is, hey client, hey Striver, or hey Rahul, or hey Raj, create an object of this class, which is actually the same as a dog, right? set whatever attributes. So we'll also like, we will also expose the setter functions or uh, like, let's say set name will be exposed. So it is, it will be a public, right? So I will just ask, hey, uh, hey, uh, Striver, right? Just uh, 
create an object of this class which is basically the same as the dash doc set whatever you want to how many times you want to i don't care because that is the not the doc class right and then pass me once you're finalized right on whatever you want to pass me to just send me just send me that object as a parameter to my doc class constructor right and i will simply do like this this dot name equals to x dot name right this dot gender is equals to x dot gender right and so on like let's say if uh, rahul says that okay i don't need i don't care about the age and vaccination this will be simply null right so i will basically doing like this this dot age equals to x dot age and let's say rahul has not set the age property of this x class that is fine because my this dot age will be null that is fine that is fine right but in this way in this way at, at least i am able to you know not expose the setter methods for the name dot class right and also i have solve this problem of backward compatibility or let's say 2 to the power n constructors wala problem for now but let's see has the problem been solved yet let's look at the client side so what does the client has to do is so basically now let's look at the client's code right or let's look at striver's code right so previously what striver was doing striver was doing like dog dog equals new dog and we are passing the parameters where you also you had to like remember the orders right here what we are doing is now what striver will do is he will First, create an object of this class, right? Because he needs to pass that object to dog class, right? So we won't be get directly creating the dog object. So what he will be doing is x obj equals to new x, right? And then he will be setting whatever parameters he wants to set, right? Set gender, set name, whatever parameters he wants to set, right? And then he will do dog dog equals to New dog, and it will just pass this x object, right? We can we are exposing the set gender method over here to the client that is driver because it is fine, right? I mean, he can set even if he sets the gender multiple times, right? But once he like once he passes that object to dog, he can't change it, right? So we only care about the dog object. X is a you can consider it as a temporary object. You can make multiple changes. You can play around with it. You can do anything. We only care about the dog object, and we only care about the fact that dog's gender once initialized cannot be changed. And that is why we are introducing a temporary object, right? So that you can play around with the object. But once it is being passed to the dog class or dog's constructor, it cannot be manipulated, right? So now. uh the benefit is i don't have to create two to the power n constructors i mean a uh, lot of constructors just to serve different clients let's, let's say now rahul comes in and rahul will also do something like this he will create a new object new x right and then he will do obj dot set whatever parameters he wants to set and he will do the same thing dog dog is new dog same will pass his object now also this problem is solved that the enforcing of the doesn't have to you know remember the order of parameters right which is a very bad thing right but but let's see are the other problem solved is the code still okay let's see how we can better it right now let's say that inside our x object instead of like what what, what instead of making it as public void state name right can we do something like this this just to make a code a little bit look more cool and it impress your interviewer right now let's say and instead of making this a void can we write like this public x set name right and okay the parameter uh, was supposed to be passed that is string name and we was we were supposed to do this dot name equals to name something like that right again this class x will contain the same attributes as of the dog right so now public x set uh, set name and that's a string name right and we will do this dot name equals to name and let's say we return this that means what we return we return the Object of the same class, the instance of the same class itself, right? Instead of returning a void, that's why we are doing a this. We all know what this keyword is, right? Basic Java concepts again. Now, what happens over here is what? Why? And this is used a lot in the industry, right? The benefit of this is when we are creating this object, instead of doing like first creating the object and then writing a lot of code in different lines, like sort set gender, or set name, or set attributes, right? We can simply do something like this. Instead of this, we can write it like this: x obj. Equals to new x, new x, right? Dot set gender male, and this set gender this so this will return an object of x constructor thus this right, and then this set gender is also going to return the the uh, the same on instance of that object itself. That is why we are returning this. So again, we can like do dot set gender 
dot set gender dot set name okay let's now make some more changes to make it look more cool right so inside this x class let's say we introduce another method i'm deleting this uh, this client for now right and let's introduce another class to this method to this uh, to this another method to this class uh, that is let's say public let's call it func and again we will rename it so we'll rename this class x in a better way and we'll rename this function in a better way but let's call it func for now right and let's say that uh, it returns an object of dog class right so what i'm trying to say is this class x will not only have the responsibility to make this object or to build this object right to build this object right but also once this object has been built with different parameters by the client it will also return an object of that client right so object of the main main class right or the like basically the dog so what we were doing previously is we were first creating the this uh, this class this intermediate class and then we were creating like doing this instead of doing this in the client side i am remove i am moving this logic over here so what i'm trying to do is public dog client func and let's say return new dog with this this as in this current object of x right so instead of doing this instead of like writing another line of code in the client side we are we are making we're moving this logic over here in this function func class func methods right and we are simply creating a new dog and like passing this as a parameter so now our client side code will be even better because i don't care about this x object right i mean this is something a temporary object and this doesn't look good in the code why will the client bother about it so that is why the client instead of writing this just with just with this adding by just adding this piece of function right now the client's code will be transformed from this to this dog dog equals to new x dot set gender male dot set name bruno right dot fun right and once i call this func right it will create this give this dog object right cool now there's one more thing there's one more problem over here for now this dog class is a separate class and this x class is a separate class right now first of all try to understand this thing that does this x class has any existence without dog no right i mean if i delete this dog if i say i don't need dog right i don't sell dogs i will sell animal uh, cat and other stuff right so do i do this will x will have any existence without dog no right also let's say shavan again comes up to me and says hey let's add another field right let's add another dog uh, attribute to the dog then not only i have to make changes over here i also have to make changes to the x class right because as i said the attributes has to be same and the developer can forget doing that right because making changes in two separate files is not that great right instead can we move this class x inside this dog class only first of all what happens is if i delete the dog class this x goes because anyway it doesn't have any existence without dog right and also if i'm adding an attribute in the dog i will have to add the another attribute to the x class and since then the same file it will be easier for me to remember to make the change right so here comes the concept of inner class and outer class i'm not going to explain it deeply because that is again a concept of java but what i'm trying to say is i will move this class x we will go to the code we will go to the code don't worry we will go to the code uh, but yeah like let's say we can easily move this class x inside class dog so basically you can consider it as uh, this is the outer class this is a concept of java by the way and inside the outer class you can some you can have some attributes you can have some getter setters right and you can also have us another class and this class right this class will be inside this outer class and this we call as inner class right and how do we instantiate this inner class right so what we do is we do new outer class we create an object of that right dot new inner class this is how we get an object of inner class right i mean it's very simple right consider this inner class as an attribute itself right so if so if let's say this outer class has an attribute a so how would you have uh, access that attribute new outer out, new outer class an object of that class dot a right new outer class dot a that is and then similarly that that is why if you now let's say this inner class is now also an attribute of this outer class right so consider it like that right so that therefore you are doing new outer class dot new inner class so that you again get an object of the inner class in this way you can be able to uh, like access this inner class you can't simply do dot just inner class because this inner class doesn't have any existence 
uh, without the outer class. So that is why every time you have to do new outer class dot new inner class, right? I think this is a this is a concept of Java. I'm not going to deep into it, right? Coming there. Now, once I move this class X inside the class doc, how will my client's code change? Let's see that. Okay, now let's look at the code after we have added the inner class, right? So now what we'll do is dog dog equals to new dog new or new x dot set gender whatever we want to do right and dot then found right to get a dog class but hey this code will fail right and striver will be really angry with me why because inside the dog class there is an there is only one constructor where it needs an object where it needs the object right so for this dog class to get instantiated it depends on x right because first I have to get this x object and then only I can call this dog class, right? But again, 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 this x class, since it's an inner class of dog class, x has no existence without dog. So x cannot be instantiated without instantiating the dog class because x is a property of like a dog class, right? So you can see there's a paradox over here. How will we solve this? So dog is dependent on x to be instantiated because it is x as a parameter to its constructor and x since it's an outer an inner class to dog it cannot be instantiated without instantiating dog class. So how do we solve this? So for that reason I think I'm actually I'm very sure you have guessed it by now we make we make this x class static and once we make a static again static is a concept of Java I'm not going too deep into it otherwise this video will go long right. So as a result what happens is when you make this class static right we don't have to create any object of dog class and as a result instead of doing new dog what we can do is we can simply write like this so this code won't work but this will surely we will do dog dot new x dot set gender right and then whatever you want to do and ultimately call, call dot func to build our get our dog class is this clear so this code is backward compatible, yes, because if we make any changes to the dog class, uh, if we add any attribute to the dog class, we will add to the dog class and also we will add to this inner class, that is the static inner class, right? And we won't have to make any changes over here, right? The ordering, the, like the client does not have to remember, this code looks real, real clean, right? And uh, we don't need like two to the one n constructors or different combination of constructors, we are only, we only need one constructor, right? That is this, this, this constructor, right? Uh, this constructor right so all our problems are solved and the code looks real clean now there's only one thing left how do we name x what what should, what would be a good name for x right because again clean coding naming variables functions methods class are very important so what would be a good name for x the good name is let's understand what this class is doing this class as i said is building your object it's prepared preparing a dog class right so we can call this class a dog builder right and what do we call this x like this func method right what this method is doing it's building your dog object once like you have like uh, you have like have the consensus on the different parameters that you want to send you ultimately call this build function which builds the dog instance and sends you that right as a result you can change whatever you want to in this dog builder class but once you call the build you have the dog object and then you can then you don't have the set as exposed so you can't set uh, get so change any of the attribute once it is set already via this object dog builder that is passed to the dog as a parameter so now we will go to the code right so this will be and then i think after once you once you go to the code i think things will be very very clear for you so this is the sample code that i've written so i have uh, like created this dog class with this following attributes right and this is the uh, like the driver of the client class from where my dog is getting called. So let's look at the dog class first. So this is the following attributes and you can see that I have said I have only created only one constructor that is going to take a dog builder uh, object, right? And it is setting uh, my attributes according to the this builder object, right? This dog builder object, right? And you can see this all the setter methods are private. All the setter methods are private. So uh, like because I'm not exposing this to the client, right? And now what I'm doing over here is uh, I am I, again I have initialized this dog builder class inside the dog class as an inner class, right? Uh, and you can see this is static so that I don't need to create an instance of the dog class, right? And again I have, this has the same parameters. This has the same parameters as the dog class, right? And you can see that this set gender is a public method because this of the dog builder, right? And dog builders we can allow the, the we can allow to expose the setter methods, right? Because the client would be using it to set uh, different attributes. So, and like we are returning an instance of dog builder because we saw how we can like return dog builder that the instance of that object too, so that we can 
write code in a single line, right? So that is why in every set of methods, we are, instead of void, we are returning an instance of dog builder, right? And we are returning this, right? And uh, we have also exposed the set of methods, right? So nothing much about it, right? Probably I will attach this code uh, somewhere in description down below, or let's see how we can do it. I will plan it. But anyway, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. I've already uh, gone through the code. I've already explained to you in detail. Now let's look at how we are calling this uh, dog uh, class. So what we are doing is dog dog one equals to new dog, right? New dog dot dog dog builder, right? So this is a static class, uh, and hence we are doing like this, and we are setting the name. We are setting name, gender, breed, right? and price and then we are building it to get the dog class and over here you can see we are setting gender so you, so you can see that the order doesn't matter because i was setting the gender uh, after setting the name and here i'm setting the gender first time and then i'm setting the name and also you can see i was setting the breed over here and price over here but i'm not setting uh, the price and breed over here so there are different combinations of parameters that i'm taking care of i don't impose the client to remember the order also i don't impose the client to have every piece of information and of, about the attributes right and then i build like this and if i run the code uh, you can see that you know the name Bruno gender male is printed and for breed it's null for the second dog it's null because I haven't passed the information so I think that's it for the video guys if you have liked this uh, video please don't forget to press the like button uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel don't forget to press the bell notification right so that every time I upload a similar video notified don't forget to follow me on Instagram and join my telegram group the link is in description down below I will be providing you with more such videos I will next I will be discussing the singleton pattern and the factory pattern right and maybe I will be coming up with more such design content on my YouTube channel also I have created a graph playlist series which you can definitely go and check out from top to bottom uh, like all the videos will really 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 make give you a lot of confidence in graph because I've explained every concept on every algorithm in detail along with solving problems, right? Similar to this video. So do go and check that out. I will attach the link to the graph playlist in the description down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, don't forget to like the videos, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay safe and goodbye.